I'm Kristen from Stuff Mom Never Told You. Now when people start throwing around the term brain orgasm, it definitely gets more attention than say, brain stuff. And that's one way that Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, or ASMR, has captured the interest of one growing corner of the internet. Another is ASMR's effect itself. It's described by many as a satisfying tingle that runs from the top of your head down your spine. And it's caused as a variety of sensory stimuli, from the sound of whispering to the sight of someone combing their own hair. And side note, folks, I do personally experience ASMR, so even if you don't, I can't attest to the fact that at least for this brain, it, it does orgasm sometimes, neurologically speaking. So let's examine what ASMR is, what triggers it, how science responds to it, and how its online community works. Now the actual term ASMR was coined by healthcare IT professional Jen Allen, who also started a research institute dedicated to analyzing this euphoric phenomenon. The orgasm association is not, I repeat, not necessarily sexual, but ASMR does feel comparably good. Each individual responds to sensory triggers differently, but in general, ASMR is described as meditative and soothing. Trigger examples include, for instance, light sounds of crinkling, a person whispering slowly, or someone completing a task with personal attention, like painting or cutting hair, or my personal favorite, giving a cranial nerve examination. ASMR is described much like synesthesia, the phenomenon where one sense produces the experience of another. And like synesthesia a few years back, ASMR is having trouble getting recognition in the scientific community. In fact, because the term isn't medically recognized, there's been a prolonged battle over whether it should even have a Wikipedia entry. Research on ASMR is still in its infancy, but neuroscientist Stephen Novella believes it likely has real neurological causes that could potentially be miniature seizures or hardwired evolutionary reactions. Other people theorize that dopamine or serotonin are involved or that it's a bonding phenomenon connected to mother-child nurturing, releasing the hormone oxytocin. Now if you've never experienced ASMR and want to give it a try, I've got good news. There is a whole community online primarily cultivated by whisperer videos where people called evokers record ASMR triggers by speaking softly and making sounds with objects like feathers, brushes, and plastic bags. Evokers tend to be young women who often play roles like travel agents, hairdressers, or optometrists. When an evoker uses a 3D microphone, the triggers intensify, providing an auditory experience that moves up close and personal. And this isn't just a niche group, either. Hundreds of evokers are uploading thousands of videos to help their viewers relax. There are male evokers too, but they're rarely welcomed by the ASMR community, possibly due to cultural expectations of gender roles and nurturing. But that's a double-edged sword when the most popular videos feature young women on YouTube, not exactly known for its sympathetic humanitarians. Read the comments on any ASMR video, or even this one, and you'll see battles play out between trolls and the defenders of a host. But despite this incident, the ASMR community is mostly democratic and provides a shared experience for those like me who can feel the tingle of the brain orgasm. Now once you've dipped your toe in the ASMR video pool, come on back and tell us how you felt afterward. If anything, it'll make you realize just how loud everything else on the internet is. Or if you're like me and already experienced ASMR, let me know what your triggers are in the comments below. Cranial nerve exam, what, what? Where y'all at, right? <laughs>